Oh, poor guy. Can't imagine how it feels to have to be so public after his mother's death. Can't believe she made it past the pandemic that mostly killed old people only to die shortly after. And the fact that it was due to mental deterioration after her husband's passing. Always thought the royal weddings were fake and just for alliances. Pavements packed along this narrow street, heavy with the history of kings and queens past and present. King Charles follows on foot with his three siblings. Man, the guy's mother just fucking Prince died Andrew and you're already taking the piss out of him. Out with shouts what of God a fucking trap. Like, holy... Arrest. Wait, hold up. Now, it turns out that peacefully protesting and holding a sign like this one could get you arrested in the UK. Since that arrest, there's been a number of other incidents across the country. They proclaimed Charles to be our only rightful Lord and King, and I found that pretty hard to stomach. So I called out who elected him, and then the police interrupted, grabbed hold of me, they handcuffed me, they put me in the back of a police van. Now, this sign certainly is provocative, especially during the official mourning period for the Queen. I'm certainly not endorsing it by holding it, but protest in the UK, especially peaceful protest, is normally reasonably well protected. Even if you disagree with this sign, even if it offends you that's being held so close to the Queen's death, that doesn't ordinarily impact freedom of speech and freedom of protest. And I wanted to protest that issue of freedom of expression, so I went down with a, with a blank A3 sheet that said nothing, but just stood there outside Parliament. And then I started walking around with it, and at that time a policeman came up to me. I said I was going to write, not my king, king on a sign. And you asked my king. Who's that going to offend? He said, yeah, probably yes, because it's offensive and, and therefore against the Public Order Act. And just a police officer coming up to them and threatening them with arrest is enough to, to put them off. Um, and that's why it's really important for the police to be careful about the way that they're policing things at the moment. Are we really now in a place in 21st century Britain where a new head of state is proclaimed, uh, we're told to accept this person without without any question. Well, this is absolutely the time to talk about the future of the monarchy because we have a new monarch. And, um, you know, Charles has become king without consent, without discussion or debate. It just happened automatically. Um, and there is uh, no effort to have a serious debate about that, and that is completely wrong. They wouldn't do it, would they, if uh, the lady down the road would they? Yeah. So you're talking about a monarch of this country has been around for 70 years. I think that's just disrespectful. I don't think she'd be arrested. I'd probably just totally ignore him. Well, that was something. I mean, you saw the footage. There were arrests over blank sheets of fucking paper. That crap happened in Hong Kong during the crackdowns. And while I think you all know how I feel about the CCP at this point, so what the fuck is going on? In short, remember Count Dankula? You know, that dipshit who made their pug do porter sick hell like six fucking times because as we all know, no, repetition only makes a joke funnier. Well, both that and these arrests are for breaking the exact same law. But this time, I can actually get the snowflakes on board because bitching about the 1% is more agreeable than defending an edgelord. So yeah, the Public Order Act, a law so controversial Mr. Bean campaigned against it. For real though, huge respect to Mr. Rowinson. Let's just go through it and see why it's so damn controversial even after it removing the word insulting. Uses threatening or abusive words. So first off, it specifies words which immediately makes it a limit on speech. Sure, right now it's basically just describes harassment but harassment is already a crime and it's characterised by one's actions. If you call someone the cunt, that's not harassment, but if you continue pursuing them to a point it goes from a one-time diss to an invasion of personal space, that's harassment. 
and of course the vagueness. Sure, if you call a black guy a nigger, then that'd obviously be abusive. If you say you're gonna kill someone, that's obviously threatening. But what about you fucking bitch? Are you being abusive towards a woman or getting mildly annoyed at a friend? Are you threatening them with a lead up to a fight or is it just banter? Or behaviour or disorderly behaviour? So behaviour makes more sense. But as explained before, behaviour is a determinant of the context. Ruling it separate allows for an arrest of threatening language without any real behavioural threat. And of course disorderly behaviour. The fuck's disorderly behaviour? If I'm pissed having a laugh with my fellow drunkards, is that disorderly? Displace any writing, sign, or visible representation which is threatening or abusive. Now we are at the point where pulling fuck the king on a sign would get one arrested. Mostly because it is a direct verbal abuse towards an individual. But if you agree that that should lead to an arrest, then any protest sign using vulgar language should lead to an arrest. Don't like a company causing pollution? Can't tell the CEO to fuck themselves. Don't like government policy? Can't tell them they're shitheads. An offence under this section may be committed in a public or private place. This basically specifies that it can be done out in public to inside your home and everywhere in between. This is why Count Dankula could get arrested for a video filmed in his own home and is played inside of other people's homes. Admittedly the internet makes it more complicated but you know, kind of a redundant statement. Except that no offence is committed where other words or behaviour are used or the writing, sign or other visible representation is displayed by a person inside a dwelling and the other person is also inside that or another dwelling. Admittedly this is where the legal jargon stumped me aside from from a by a person inside a place or the other shares it or isn't sharing. It either refers to people living or not living together or a person being present or not present. Either way, both apply, so it's just adding more cases for these restrictions to apply within. Oh, and of course, abusive language towards someone who isn't in that dwelling. It's illegal to slag people off by this wording. That's how recklessly vague this piece of legislation is. Your boss could press charges for you venting about work using colourful language. It is a defence for the accused to prove, finally, a defence. Let's see what the exceptions are then. That he had no reason to believe there was any person within hearing or sight. Yeah, the legal document online uses male pronouns. If anyone wants to check if it's like that officially, someone cheeky could argue that because it's a woman, the law doesn't apply. Then that cause such an uproar, the law gets in the news and there's more pressure to amend or even scrap it. Anyway, so within hearing or sight, so immediately anyone outside of earshot of Charles was wrongfully prosecuted and the police should be reprimanded for their abuse of power. So harassment towards a public figure is tricky but generally it's accepted that the bar is a lot higher towards celebrities due to the nature of their job simply bringing more exposure to things that'd be triggering. But again, telling someone to fuck off on the street isn't harassment it's certainly not going to cause alarm. Then distress? I think the guy is distressed because he's being paraded around like it's fucking bonfire night when his mother's just fucking died. Not because some prat he's never met said that they don't want him to rule. Maybe if this was France, then I could understand, but this isn't.
I'd say thankfully, but frankly, France is doing better off than we are right now. That he was inside a dwelling and had no reason to believe the words or behaviour used. See the connecting and? The rest of this document was careful to include ors, so only a single thing could mark you as a criminal. Now, even if there's no reason to believe what you were saying, tough luck, you're outdoors. Someone may have overheard you and got distressed because they're a fucking snowflake into the slammer with you. Or the writing sign or other visible representation displayed would be heard or seen by a person outside that or any other dwelling. Basically, if you're alone, then you're good. If there's someone with you, well, they'd better be on the same page. So, if, say, a monarchist seen it and was offended, well, it's a crime. That's at least the reasoning the police are going with. Let's hope the Supreme Courts continue to send people on their way. Their way home, obviously. They already ruled swearing at police doesn't count. So the court must really be getting fed up with police being snowflakes and abusing this law to shut people down. That this conduct was reasonable. And the real defence to these arrests? They were literally holding pieces of paper. In what situation would that be unreasonable? Thank fuck that legal bullshit's over. So yeah, if this shit is legal at the end of the day what's the big deal well for one the fact that the police arrests remove protesters during a protest it entirely neuters their protests and due to the vague nature of a, of the law a cop can't be dragged with abuse of power because as we've seen with Count Dankula case, it's all about how it appears, not how it actually is. So where a cop would get done for being gun ho and not waiting for evidence to materialise, they can just say, Well, it looked like it. And get away scot-free for impeding people's freedom of expression. That and the fact that the law is being used to protect politicians from criticism because it's phrased harshly? It's blatant censorship. But dipshits will happily agree with they were being arrested for being unnecessarily insulting instead of they were arrested for disagreeing with a political figure. If it was illegal to talk to people like trats, then Australia would be a convict colony. So yeah, to say Britain has a fucked up past would be an understatement. We literally invented concentration camps, but that is no excuse for continuing human rights abuses. Our government wanted to put disabled people on a do not resuscitate list. What an insidious way to save money on the NHS. You fucking prejudiced pricks. No wonder why you fucks wanted to change human rights abuses to only the government actively impeding them. Oh, don't worry. The state isn't murdering us autistic people. We're just criminally neglecting them until they die on their own accord. That's way different. And of course, no statement from the king condemning the arrests. Now, I have great sympathy for Charles' situation. He's dealing with the loss of his mother as publicly as it can get, and he has to take a stressful public job while he's still mourning and way past retirement age. You can see he's barely holding it together when Parliament is singing God Save the King as the realisation has time to sink in. But, and this is a huge but, he is the head of state. His word at times is more valuable than the actual leader, despite him being a glorified rubber stamp they parade around. It shouldn't be monarchists on the news saying he wouldn't condone the arrests. It should be the monarchy itself saying that. Speaking of which, 
You know what is also poorly timed and disrespectful? A fucking week and a half of parading around the country like it's bonfire night, using taxpayer money to do so, costing us millions while we're struggling to pay for electricity. The funeral? Fair. The addresses? Fair. Dismissing Parliament as per tradition when they just got back from holiday and allow them to continue to leave the nation to fucking burn during an unprecedented crisis? Fuck off. Tradition is one thing, but there's a time and a place and this isn't the fucking time, not by a long shot. No ill intent towards Charles. I don't hate him. Well, I did just condemn him for his silence in regards to police abusing their power. Point is, I'm not French. I don't want the guy dead. He can keep his unimaginable wealth, but since he's just a mascot at this point, abolish the monarchy. There was already controversy with his mother working with the Conservatives to pass her own laws when she should be apolitical, so I just say it's not worth the money to sacrifice our liberty. Our history has been a story of a peaceful decline of royal power. Let's close this chapter and rid ourselves of our last legacy of empire and start anew. Not my king. Also, while we're at it, can we take up proportional voting nationwide instead of first past the post county elections? It would stop the Conservative coalition dominating elections against the divided left wing. Let's be real, local representatives are loyal to their party, not to the county anyway. Abolish the monarchy, yatta yatta, I ruined descending lol. 